Well, welcome back. Thank you guys for joining me for part two of this. I don't know if I've got the exact name that I'm going to name this segment, but we're actually doing an exploration of the word curse. Now, the premises for my doing this particular teaching is um, traditionally we have had the understanding in at least in my in my in my personal church history where I grew up. I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and my understanding of the word curse when it came to Malachi chapter three verse 9 was that God when we don't tithe we don't bring offerings that God curses us that you are cursed and that that evil is being invoked upon you by God and so when you didn't tithe you didn't give your offerings what it was hap- what was going to happen to you is that you know your car is going to break down you know God protects your stuff and he's going to And so we had this perspective of God that really is inconsistent with his divine nature. It's really inconsistent with who he is. And so when you look at the concept of, as we spoke about in our last segment, how the very words that a person would speak to invoke evil is a curse, that God tells us emphatically, he says, don't curse, don't swear. He says, if you have have issue with your enemy, he says, bless those who curse you you. He, so he tells us, he, he doesn't, he doesn't one he doesn't give us permission to curse. So why would he in turn, turn around and curse the very people that he's been charged or he's deemed to love? Why would he do that? And if that being the reality that one, God doesn't curse us, how can the negative effects happen to us? Where do they come from? How is it sourced? And what can we do to counteract it? So we ended the last segment. We defined the word curse. Go back and listen to that segment. We talked about um, that the uh, curse and blessing carry equal weight in that they are the acquisition. Uh, It is about the acquisition of a state through the making of a choice. So we acquire a certain mindset. A state is a way of thinking. Our values, our beliefs, our ideologies are rooted in the states that we live on, that we we function under. Uh, For example, some people live under a state that's influenced by high positivity. So most of the things that they do will be rooted in positive mindsets that create positive outcomes. And then there are people who are rooted in negative states or negative frames of reference. And so a lot of their actions will generate outcomes that turn out to be negative. Why? Because they're uh, because of the state that they're rooted in. Now, all states come through making choices. That's why in Deuteronomy 3, uh, 30 verse 19, where God talks, tells the children to choose you this day whom you will serve. So we get to pick. So curses and blessing come through the acquisition of a state that happens when we make choices. Okay. Now let's go back to that passage where we were talking. We stopped where we were start about to define. We saw where the word curse in the English had three derivatives. We also realized that the Hebrew language is made of what are called root words. Okay. Root words. Now, when it comes to understanding how root words function, it's important to know that just like that word curse in the English brought together various cultures to form it, form an insight, the same thing happens in the Hebrew with what we call root words. Okay. So now, um, Let's see here. Where am I going to start? I apologize. I'm pulling up my notes, you guys, because there's so much. Is this good? Has this blessed you? Uh, Thank you, Sarah, for tuning in. I appreciate you for logging back on. So let's look at now. Let's look at the root words of the word curse in the Hebrew. Now, first of all, there's not just one word. There are multiple words that relate to the understanding of a cursed um a cursed state of life. So as opposed to using that understanding to say you are cursed, let's use it with the understanding that you have a cursed state of life. You've made choices that bring your life under the influence of a potentially cursed state where negative things can happen. We're going to talk about how that transpires in just a minute. 
But if you look at the meaning of the word curse, and we're going to use, and you might want to write down the Strong's number, 779, that's the word, and the word is aron. Now, I don't know if I'm saying it right, because it's really a very raspy sound, a very thoracic sound. But that word has three, three root meanings, okay? So when you look at the acquisition of a state that comes through the making of choices, that word, in, uh, taught, what we used in the last segment, we talked about in Genesis chapter 3, how Satan had went, how God had made, a, made an, uh, um, an, an edict against Satan. He says, and the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this. So there was an action that came out of a thought that was rooted in the acquisition of a state and a mindset. So our state influences our mindsets. Okay, you see how this stuff connects. So now we see to be so that one of the re, one of the meanings of that word at seven seven nine it means to be slighted, to be swift to act against, to be trifling, to be made of little account, to make light of. So now let's go and look at that. When he says you are cursed with the cursed, he is saying. You have been marked with the tendency to be swift to make the word of God trifling. You have been marked with the tendency to be swift to make the word of God of little account. You have been marked with the tendency to be swift to make light of God's covenant promises. So those mindsets, so we look at those three meanings, those meanings to be slight to be swift, to be trifling, to be made of little account, to make light of. So when God says you are cursed with the curse, he says you are marked with the acquisition of a mindset that you choose, you've chosen so that you're making light of the word. You're making the word of little account in your choices you're making the word of you're making the word to be trifling in your decisions. You're making the word to be you're sliding the word so that now when that word we talk about that word curse, it makes more sense. It's not God saying uh, you curse with a curse. I curse you. You're going to fall. Your the life going to fall apart. Your kids going to get sick. You you going to lose your job. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the acquisition of a state. And so now he's saying you have acquired a state where you are swift to, to void the laws of God. You've, you've acquired a mindset where you are swift to make the God, to make the word of God as if it, to be trifling over the word. You've acquired a state and a mindset to be of little account. So now you are minimizing by choice the power of God and the influence of God over your thoughts, your actions, your, the way. So when he turns to Satan and he says, because you have done this, now we are acting out of the acquisition of those states of mind. So Satan acquired a frame of mind where he was going in opposition to what God had instructed and told Adam and Eve to do. And so now that he has acquired a mindset, he is now perpetuating that mindset and influencing others. So Satan is now influencing Adam and Eve in their choices. So that now because of their choices, they are now going to be influenced. Now, go back to Deuteronomy chapter third, chapter 30th. It's something else that we really need to pay attention to in that passage. Now, when you read that passage, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses. Let's stop and think about that. Because that means when I make choices, there are two realms that God just noted that are watching. Heaven is watching and earth is watching. Well, if heaven is watching, who's in heaven? And if earth is watching, 
who's in the earth. Well, let's stop and think about that because now we're talking about if God doesn't turn around and curse me and tear up my stuff and make my, you know, my kids get sick, lose the job, car break down, all of this negative stuff that happens. What, what, who and what am I partnering with to give that partner the opportunity to manifest what the state that I'm in? Now, Deuteronomy 30, 19, this day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he invites them, now choose life. So who's watching? Well, let's go to Psalms 103. I believe it's 103. Okay, Psalms 103. And then we're going to go to around. Yes, let's go. Psalms 103. Let's go to verse 19. Now, this is new. This is the Holy Spirit just dropped this in my head. So I'm pulling this up. I'm, I'm, this is coming out of my spirit as I'm teaching. Okay. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. This is Psalms 103, 19. Bless the Lord, you, his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Okay, so we already see, now there are angels that are assigned, that are in the heavens. The Lord has already decreed in verse 19, the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens. So we know that there is a realm of heavenly support, angels that are sent to minister to the heirs of righteousness. So when God says, choose life that you and your children may live. So what he was saying, I am giving you the opportunity to access a realm of a authority so that you can now walk in the law of blessing so that you can now, what do we talk about? The acquisition of mindsets. So God is saying, look, I have, I've got, I've, I've established my throne in heaven. There's a heavenly realm. And he says, I am now giving you the option to acquire a state of mind by making choices. And the choices that you make will give you access to everything that heaven offers to support. It gives you access to the angels. It gives you access to where Jesus says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. It gives you access to your authority. It gives you access to the Holy Spirit. It gives you access to divine downloads. It gives you access to creative ideas. It gives you, just like he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, it gives you access for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The word think has a threefold meaning. It is a word. It means to plat. And when you have access to that mindset, then there are three things being platted together. It is God's original idea. When he thought of you and created you in his mind, he had a perspective of what and wh who you could become. So when God says, I know the thoughts that I think, the one that that is his contribution. And then the second contribution is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us access to God now. In other words, for if the David says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. That means I have the opportunity by the power of the Holy Spirit to ascend into the heavens, to get access to what God is thinking about me, what he thought about me when he created me in his mind. And then what he's thinking about me and my, my, my current circumstance. But then there was, so, so I've got God to partner with in that plat. Jer, um, we're talking about how our frame of reference, God does not curse you. We're talking about if God doesn't curse you, how do you come under the state where you're living in a cursed frame of life? How do you come under the state where you're living under the blessed life? So we're talking about the blessed life first. Because God said in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to witness. So the first realm of witness where, we're, where God has called witnesses to see, to partner with you. They see what's going on and they're here to partner with you. You've got witnesses in heaven, sitting in, in the heavens. They're going cheering you on. You've got the great cloud of witnesses who are up there saying, you can do this. You can do this. You've got the Holy Spirit witnessing who you can partner 
partner with and you can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost when you don't know what to pray for as you are. You can pray in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit will take the prayer that you pay, go up into heaven, get God's strategy for managing it, download it into your life. And now the third part of the threefold plat from Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think, the word think, one of the meanings of that word is to plat. So you're weaving three things together. You're weaving God's perception of you when he created you. You're weaving the Holy Spirit's access to what God is thinking about you and how you can incorporate his thoughts into your circumstances right now. And you're weaving you, baby, your ideas, your vision, your dreams, your creative ideas, your thoughts, all of that. So now do you understand why the enemy wants you to think that God cursed you? Because when you start thinking that God cursed you, girl, you don't bring your ties to the church. God going to curse you. That puts a barrier that's rooted in fear, not rooted in the love of God. God's love for us is so great. Well, he even said to the children of Israel, he said, he said, what God is there so great? What nation is there so great that has a God? so nigh unto them that he is with them in everything that they can call on him for. So why would he turn around and say, you don't bring your offerings. I'm going to curse you. That is not his nature. However, since curses and blessing flow through the acquisition through of, of a state of mind, a frame of reference, a perspective on looking at the world, that negative perspective has to come from somewhere. You think? So if it doesn't come from God, if the word of God says that every good and perfect gift comes from God, that for God so loved the world that he gave the greatest thing he could give, his only begotten son. Oh, God is only good. And if evil comes, it didn't come through him. So now we see, just going back to that word, going back to the word where we talked about, we already understood that that meaning of the word curse. We looked at the meaning of that word in the, in the, in, from the, in, from the English translators, translations in the King James. But then we also looked at the roots of that word in the Hebrew. But now it gets even better than that, folks. I just, I love the scriptures, y'all. I love this word of God. Because when you really begin to understand the word of God, you make different choices. When you really begin to understand that it's not about God cursing me, it's about the choices that I make. And my choices influence the state that I function under. So here are some of the other meanings of the word curse in the Hebrew. One of them is nephile. It means to be swift, to show oneself swift, to appear trifling, to be trifling, to be insignificant, to be lightly esteemed. Then the other word is pl, to make despicable, to, uh, then there's pua, to be cursed. And then there's him feel, to make light of, to treat with contempt, to bring contempt and dishonor. And then there's pill pill, to shake, to wet, to shake oneself, to be moved to and fro. All of these words relate to the, to the acquisition of mindsets, thoughts, and ways of thinking that invite the enemy to, to, now, we talked about that first level of witnesses because he's, God said in Deuteronomy 30, I have called to witness, I'm calling to witness two realms. What's the first realm? He calls to witness Deuteronomy 13, I mean, thir Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Okay, so there are two realms. The first realm, I call heaven, that's a realm. And earth, that's a realm. So who's in heaven? Well, we just saw in Psalms 103, the thrones of God are in heaven. Okay, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So that's a realm, okay? What, what do we have access to in that realm? It says that, okay, that we have access to those who are sent to minister to be heirs of righteousness, that there are angels who are sent to minister to you, to support you. Hebrews 1, 7, uh, and, the angel, and, and of the angels, he said, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Those angels are sent to support you. They're to help you create. They're to help you launch businesses. They're to help 
you open doors. They're to help protect your children. They're to help guard your, guard your life, to guard us, to empower us to do what we were created to do. So now we realize that there are two realms. So the first realm is the first realm that God talked about in, in Deuteronomy 30. He says, I call to witness heaven and earth. So now we know that there are witnesses in heaven. So now we also know that there are witnesses on the earth. Well, who are the other witnesses? Who else is watching? Who else? A lot of, a lot of times we give Satan so much credit. We give him so much room, so much leeway. We support him in doing things. Why? Because we have partnered with a realm that now has authority to support you in creating in your life what you're partnering with. So now we've got a whole realm of the demonic here on the earth. We've got demonic entities so that when you start saying things out of your mouth and decreeing things out of your mouth that are inconsistent with what God, he said, choose life. He already said death and life are in the power of your tongue. You get to, and those, we will eat the fruit there. Well, let me just go to it. I'm sorry. Let me, let me not just, I, this stuff is in me. So when I'm teaching, it just comes out, but I want you guys to have the scriptures Okay, so he says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. D Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Notice it, it says they that love it. So what are you loving? Are you loving the, the, the acquisition of a mindset that leans towards life? Or are you loving the acquisition of a mindset that is prone towards death? You get to choose. So really, cursings and blessings are all about the acquisition of a mindset. It is about the acquisitions of thoughts. It is about the acquisition of beliefs. It's about the acquisition of values. It is about the acquisition of attitudes that allow you to make the word of God trifling. That, that it's about the acquisitions of a mindset that allow you to make light of what God's promises. It's about the acquisitions of thoughts that allow you to minimize who God is. So, now that all being said, so now we see we've got these two realms. So we've got the realm of the kingdom of light and we've got the realm of the kingdom of darkness and we get to choose. So when he said in Malachi, going back to our original premises, when he said in Malachi, you are cursed with a curse, the word there that he was talking was Oror. It's Old Testament Strong's number 779. The root, th th that, that word is a primitive root. In other words, it comes from somewhere else. It has, it has a combination of other words that formed this one. Remember in our last segment, we talked about the combination of words that formed a meaning of curse that we know it curse to, 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 to speak or to speak forth a curse out of our mouth over an individual to bring damnation and harm to their circumstance. Okay. So this word curse, as we know, it also has derivatives and we already mentioned what some of those derivatives are and they relate to the acquisitions of a mindset and a way of thinking that allows us to be, to slight the word of God, to make the word of little account, to make the word is to be trifling with the word, to minimize its importance, to despise it, to, um, to treat it with contempt and dishonor. So all of those things, once we partner with that realm, it gives the enemy opportunity to bring those negative effects or curses to, to introduce them into your life. God doesn't, he doesn't need to, God doesn't need to curse you. You do, we do, people do it to themselves. They do it to themselves through their choices. That's why we have to actively choose. We have to actively pick life. We have to 
actively decide that we want to serve. Now, here's a beautiful thing about one of the root derivative words of the word blessing. One of the derivative, one of the root meanings of the word blessing means to kneel. It means to bow. Basically, what it is saying is it means you are willing to, we are willing to humble ourselves under God's ideologies, his, his, and, and there's even another scripture in the, in the New Testament, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Our ability to rise, our ability to rise in economics, our ability to get out of debt, our ability to be promoted on our jobs, our ability to all of those positive outcomes, all of that comes as we are willing to humble ourselves under God's mindset and his ideologies. Now, not, not only, God is not just saying, I want to put you down. I want you to, you know, be, just bow down, get under there. Get, you know, no, no. That indicator of worship, people say, well, God has got a big old ego. He just want God's desire for you to worship him is not just to, not to feed his ego, the reality is what you focus on and what you worship, you become like. You acquire the nature of the thing you worship. That's why when a pedophile watches videos, it is a form of worship because he's giving his attention to videos that perpetuate the character and the nature of a pedophile. And so as he watches those videos, the ways and the nature of that behavior take root in him. Well, the same thing happens when we worship. The same thing happens when I study this word. When I put this word, the ways and the nature and the character of God become formulated in my inner man. And then as I formulate these ideas in my mindset, it allows me to take on his nature. It allows me to access his character. It brings me into an atmosphere where he lives and where he abides so that I can fellowship and commune with him. It brings me into a place where I can begin to share ideas with him and then he can help me expand on my ideas. And then I get to introduce my ideas into this earth realm so that I can now establish establish his covenant in the earth. So at the end of the day, God doesn't need to curse you. He doesn't need to say negative things about you to bring you down. He doesn't need to damn your family, your car, doesn't need to tear up your stuff. That is not who he is. And it is inconsistent with the character and the nature of God. Negative consequences come as a result of the acquisition of a mindset through the choices we make. Blessings and curses are about choices. We get to choose. Negative consequences, curses and blessings, positive consequences, blessing, negative consequences, cursings happen when we, they are the acquisition of a state through the choices that we make. When we make choices that bring us into agreement with the two realms of witnesses, Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call to heaven, those two realms, heaven and earth. In heaven, there is a realm of witnesses. There are the cloud of witnesses. There are angelic witnesses waiting on you and I to speak things that are consistent with the realm where God abides. If we look back in Psalms 103, we see that if you'll go on from verse 19, Psalms 103 talks about verse 19. It says, the Lord has prepared his throne. Verse 20 says, bless the Lord, you, his angels that excel in strength, that do his commands, hearkening unto the voice of his word. When we speak words that are in alliance with the heavenly realm and we partner with the witnesses in heaven, then now angels are listening to the words that we speak and they are hearkening unto the voice which we give God's word voice and they will then show up to produce the words that you speak out of your mouth. 
The same thing happens with the demonic realm. He says, I call to witness heaven and earth. Who's it? Who's on the earth? We've got demons and we've got imps and we've got the forces of darkness. Satan and all his cohorts are here waiting for you and I to speak words that come bring us into alliance and agreement with that realm. So when we speak words that are in agreement with that realm, or we form beliefs that are in agreement with that realm, you can tithe. But if you believe in your heart that God is going to bring a curse on you, if you miss, you can miss tithing by mistake. And that belief that you have that's misguided will Activate a thought system where you'll start attracting into your life and demonic entities who are coming to produce a fruit of an idea that you don't even know is controlling you. And that's where this word is powerful. Our words, and it takes me back to that quote that I, I, I mentioned in the last segment, that quote that I made from Stephen Covey. We've been talking all last month. We talked about beginning with the end in mind. And what did the quote say? It said, that quote said, uh, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. So now, do you see how this whole curse thing happens? One, what are our premises? Number one, the meaning of the word curse as we understand it is not the meaning of the word curse as was transcribed in the Hebrew and the Aramaic when the language was formed. So there are different understandings of that word that you need to be aware of because those understandings shape how you see the word, how you respond to the word, and how your beliefs are formed shaped by, and shaped by that word. Number one. Number two, we said that God does not cuss. He doesn't curse you. It's not his nature to speak words over your life that bring harm and damnation. It's not his nature to move down a course of anger that leads to speech that brings harm through his spoken evil over your life. That's not who he is. He, dec he decrees who he is in Jeremiah 29, 11. What do we talk about this whole thing? God says, for I know the thoughts that I think. So we understand that blessings and curses are rooted in the acquisition of certain mindsets, that those mindsets will fall under the influence of one or two realms. God says, I set before you, I, I, I'm letting you know, I recall to record heaven and earth. In heaven, there is a cloud of witnesses. There are angels and host of angels on the earth. There's Satan and his demonic co cohorts. And they are, both realms are waiting for you to think thoughts and to speak words that bring you into agreement with what perpetuates the advancement of their cause in your life. God is waiting for you to speak words and think thoughts that perpetuate the agreement of his promises over your life. And Satan is waiting for you to think thoughts and speak words that are consistent with his efforts to bring destruction, sickness, disease, all of it in our lives. We get to choose. So I want to say thank you guys for coming back on here for this second segment. I know this is deep teaching. A lot of people just like the little fluffy stuff. Oh, you know, God gonna bless you. Ooh, yes, ooh, go oh, hallelujah. We got some God finna, God finna do God. God is limited to a vast degree by what you think, what you say, and what you see. If your thoughts, no matter how well-intentioned a believer you are, if your thoughts are out of line with what he's thinking and they're not being influenced by the right realm, you can tithe your whole life long and still be baroque. You can sow your whole check thinking, um, I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm short on my rent and I know I need another $500 and I'm going to sow this $400 check I got and be evicted at the end of the month because the mindset 
the ideas, the values, the beliefs that formulate your faith have to be in alignment with the word of God. And that's why he told the children of Israel to study that word, to pray that word, to, to, to set it, to put it before their eyes. And what did he say? Joshua. And so it's going to be my last scripture, scripture, Joshua one and eight, one of my favorite passages. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, who's going to make their way prosperous? Thou, you make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua 1 and 8. So who, so what, oh gosh, don't let the word depart out of your mouth. Don't let it fade from your, your sight. Don't let it depart from your beliefs. Allow, make choices. And that's what the, the whole concept, we talked about the blessed state and the cursed state. It is the acquisition of a state through the making of a choice. That's when he talked about curses and blessings. It is the acquisition of a state through the making of choices. And there are witnesses in heaven and there are witnesses in earth paying attention to the choices that we make. Our choice, we speak about our choices, we think about our choices, and when we make choices that are in partnership with this heavenly realm or that are in partnership with the earth realm, there are entities, there are witnesses waiting to help bring it to pass. Well, I'm out of time on this second segment. I want to say thank you guys so much for connecting with me today. Love you, love you, love you. We are working diligently. We are selecting, uh, I've set, actually sent out two packets this past week for uh, identifying sites. We've identified six weeks uh, of, between now and the end of 2018 where we can actually do the three pilot programs. So I'm going to select three cities um, between now and the end of the year where we're going to do the pilot programs for the customer service academy and i've got my list if you are if you are in a city uh, and you would like more information about bringing the customer service academy this is my passion this is this is one of the things that i feel like god gave me to make my mark on the earth the customer service academy is a youth and young adult job training program we bring 75 to 100 students together in your city for one week of training it's like the academy is like a fin the finishing school Okay, so if they've been going through this job training program and that job training program and that program and doing their, before you send them on their job, you need to send them to the academy so we can polish them and prep them in literally seven days. Okay, at the end of seven, at the end of the fifth day, so Monday through Friday, they get training every night. It's 20 hours. Okay, that Saturday, we bring uh, 20 employers on site and each student gets to interview with three to five different employers. Okay. I always tell students do, you have to do a minimum of three, but it's always good to do five. And so if you do, when they come so that our, when we did the Academy on the West coast and I'm actually bringing this program back, we did it on the West coast from 1997 to 2005. Then I did two smaller scale versions in Hattiesburg, Mississippi in 2010 and 2000. 2011 so that as we did that uh, as we did that um, now we're bringing it back we're going to be doing three full-scale uh, pro pilots in large cities so this needs to be in a large city um, if you want more information about you know how you know would your city qualify to do an academy program uh, how we pull students together how we're funded what if there are cost go ahead and message me on Facebook or you can email me I'll send you my email love you guys mwah, mwah, mwah. you make it a great day and until we meet again peace out thank you for connecting with me